China are back at it again. Because for 20 points in Series 30, you can go ahead and get yourself this, the MG MG7. Honestly, at this point, they might as well just call it the MG 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 MG7. This thing has got 257 brake horsepower, 290 foot pounds of torque, and weighs 3,638 pounds, so it's so, so hefty. But under this weird looking front area here, which honestly looks like it could get away with being a rebadged Toyota, there is a 2 litre turbocharged engine, giving us that 257 brake. Going to the side, it does look pretty cool, also kind of a little bit like a Volvo, I'd say. And then at the back, it's not actually too bad, I kind of didn't know what I'd think of the back, but it uh, turns out, it's not awful. Going to the inside, we've got ourselves normal sport and eco modes. Obviously, we're out here in sport because the joys of Horizon. And then going over to the right hand side, we've got a little thing that says MG, but that is a massive digital display. But now let's go ahead and take a listen to this thing. Alrighty, here we are now over at the upgrade shop, we're going to jump to conversion, over to engine swaps, we've got ourselves just one, and is it the one I think it is? It is the 1.6 litre inline 4 turbo rally. Ah, oh, what a joy, why is that the most common engine swap? We do also have the option to drivetrain swap this thing, because believe it or not, this thing is front wheel drive stock, but we can make it rear wheel drive or all wheel drive, which we'll definitely come back to in just a little bit. Let's also go ahead and check out the aero while we can, it is just bland Forza aero at the front, and I've got a feeling it's going to be the same at the back, is it? Yeah, wow, falls the customization that seems to be lacking a bit, especially compared to last week's Hyundai. And I mean severely lacking. As for tyres, this thing starts out stock on some street tyres. We can go up to sport and semi-slick, but I've got an idea for this today. Because our friendly mechanic Macintosh has decided to go ahead and make us another team for this thing, so let's go ahead and haul up the share code real quick. There it is, feel free to go ahead and try this thing out for yourself, and I'm going to do that now, which is going to be quite interesting. So with this tune, we now have 2,922 pounds of weight, which is a lot lighter than before, and nearly 400 brake horsepower for 40,000 credits. Now, as far as I'm aware, this tune is a blind tune, which means it hasn't been tested, so uh, this should be very interesting. Going over to designs and paints, we've got sadly nothing in advance like normal, it's kind of becoming a weird trend, and a whopping one manufacturer colour. Wow, that's a lot to go through. Personally, I think white looks really good on this thing, which is why I'm going to stick with it. So this is the MG7, it's a rather interesting looking thing and it does look like a much more modern version of the Toyota Camry, if you've ever seen one of those. I'm pretty sure you know what I'm talking about at the front. But, uh, well, here's the thing about this particular MG. With a lot of the world going for more SUVs and EVs and other various types of vehicle, this thing won't be coming to the UK, it won't be coming to Australia, I don't even know if it's in America, but uh, at least it's popular in China. Which means, sadly, I've not seen one, and I don't think I will get to see one of these, not unless I go on a very expensive overseas trip. And away we go, because even if I don't get to see one of these out anywhere in the wild, we do get to see it in-game and get to drive it for ourselves. So let's go ahead and see how it does against a whole host of other various sort of uh, super saloons. But do bear in mind about this, we are front-wheel drive, so uh, this could get very interesting. Oh hey, that's this car's tuna. And by tuna, I mean, you know, tuna that makes the car, not the fish. Oh, and dare I mention, this thing has got nine gears from stock for its automatic gearbox, which is honestly absolutely absurd. You don't need to have nine gear gearboxes. I think we're hitting the limit here, a bit like I hit that wall. Although, to be fair, I didn't intend to hit the wall. So after driving this for a little bit, 32% of this track, I can tell you it understeers so, so much. It's absolutely insane. But then again, it's front wheel drive and I'm trying to drive it like it's rear wheel because I'm just too used to super saloons being rear wheel drive. So that could be on my part too. Well, that does bring me on to a very, very good point, And that is why are a lot of saloon cars or saloon hatchbacks, sedans, whatever you want to call them, they practically all look the same. Why are all of the good ones suddenly becoming front wheel drive? Honestly, there's a lot of very missed potential. Take, for example, the 2017 to 2020 Ford Mondeo. There's one that uh, I know of and have seen recently. But again, it's front-wheel drive. That is a lot of wasted potential. You could have made that rear-wheel drive and done a lot more with it. You could have had, a, I guess, a bit like the old Mondeo uh, sort of touring cars. You could have had those with a modern style. But I just don't get it. So if you happen to be a car manufacturer watching this, oh dear, that's kind of terrifying. But also, why so much front-wheel drive stuff? I just don't get it. Maybe it's a trick I'm missing. Anyway, past the Audi we go. We've only got a Volvo ahead of us, which I kind of compared this thing to earlier. And now the Volvo is behind us. Let's go. Alrighty, 95%. It is a clear run to the line. And hopefully, across we go. There we go. Started my sentence a bit too early there, but uh, oh well. Anyway, that is a nice first place for us in a time of 2 minutes 49. 
Alrighty, so here we are now back over at the upgrade shop. We're gonna jump over to everything in a second, but first, you just take a listen to how good this thing sounds with the race exhaust. Pretty nice, isn't it? Okay, now we're gonna go ahead, swap this thing to all wheel drive, and we're gonna go ahead and also swap in the turbo rally engine because we're gonna try and make this thing into a drag build, but I don't think it's gonna go very well. Okay, so after all that upgrading, we're sat at just over £3,000 with 668 brake horsepower and not even the middle of S1, which is a bit disappointing, really. So once again, a call out to Forza. For the love of everything, can we have more than just that one little uh, sort of turbo rally engine? Can we have like a K-series swap for this thing? That would be honestly, actually, I think pretty good instead of just this constant 1.6 litre all the time. Please, it's getting boring. In the meantime, here we are now over at the back of the festival. So we're going to go ahead and see. Do we get a wheelie check? We, no, we, we could not just probably about the worst stall I think I've ever seen. Well, there's no Super 7 card here for us today, but we're on launch control, and away we go. Let's go ahead and see what we can get out of the MG7. It does have, like you see there, that cool little active aero rear spoiler thingy, or rear wing, but uh, I don't know if that's going to make up for how quick this thing isn't on the drag strip. I'm genuinely hoping it gets faster. But no, 165 through there, and off the end of the drag strip at 189, just... And what do we have? Uh, zero brakes, like normal. Honestly, this is becoming a disturbing trend at this point. Anyway, after that very disappointing drag run, honestly, it's genuinely a bit sad. We're going to go ahead, throw this thing back onto some semi slicks, and of course, we're going to go ahead and find, hopefully, if we can find it here somewhere, our good old set of race springs and dampers. There they are. Cool, let's go ahead and get this thing out to the motorway for a bit of a top speed run. However, before we do that, here is this week's Forza Thon shop. We have got the 2021 Rimac Nevera, which is honestly a really good car to have. The Black Drift Zone T. We've got the Pinball Machine Car Horn, which sounds a bit like this. Hey, fantastic. What a win. Anyway, we've also got the Horizon Super Wheel Spin, the number 64 Nissan 370 Drift Formula Drift Car, and a regular Horizon Wheel Spin to boot. And now, back out to the motorway. Okay, here we are now over at the edge of the motorway. Let's go ahead and get ourselves onto some launch control, and away we go. Let's go ahead and see if we can get a decent amount of speed, or at least do better than 189, which for this thing might honestly be quite a bit of a push, even for this car. We're going to ignore the fact that I completely forgot there was a gear at the end of that sentence. In the meantime, out of the speed zone at 218.93, which is good, but compared to some previous cars we've had, a little bit disappointing, but we're going to go ahead and keep going, because like normal, we've got the downhill and speed camera still to go, so let's go ahead and figure out what we've got going there. And there's the camera, 234.24, and continuing going downhill, 238, 239, anything more than that? Yeah, 240. Okay, 241 for a split second, that caught me a little off guard, I'm not going to lie. So 241 out of this thing isn't too bad, but it does take up pretty much all of the motorway to get there, which uh, kind of is bad, to be honest. In the meantime, let's go ahead and see how this thing does taking it drifting. So let's go ahead and throw this thing in here. We've got to try and be, I want to say, maybe about 30,000 points, which is kind of about the, you know, bare minimum I have for these. And we did 35,995 points. Not too bad. Did you know the price of this car in USD would be around 21,800 US dollars? Alrighty, here we go, going back the other way now, let's go ahead and chuck this thing in here, this is of course, you know, round number two, run number two, whatever you want to call it. Going out the other side, and not very sideways, at 26,126 points, which is, uh, not great. Then again, this hasn't exactly proved to be the most, uh, useful of cars, shall we say. But, uh, then again, it is still there if you want to go ahead and collect this thing, but, well, I'd say probably just hold off until next week on this one. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. I'll go ahead and see you all in the next one. A like, share, comment, subscribe, all that cool stuff. We're nearly at 1k, so uh, any little subscriptions or sharing of the video would be greatly appreciated. But yeah, thanks for watching. Tech out. See ya. The space with ye.